I'll never come to Monte Carlo out of season again. Not a single well-known personality in the hotel. Stone cold. Wait up. Gasson, call him. Tell him to get me some... Why, it's Max de Winter. How do you do? How do you do? I'm Edith Van Hopper. It's so nice to run into you here, just when I was beginning to despair of finding any old friends here in Monte. But do sit down and have some coffee. Mr. DeWitter's having some coffee with me. Go and ask the stupid waiter for another cup. I'm afraid I must contradict you. You shall both have coffee with me. Garçon, coffee, please. Cigarette? No, thank you. You know, I recognized you just as soon as you came in. Though I haven't seen you since that night at the casino at Palm Beach. <laughs> Perhaps you don't remember an old woman like me. Are you playing the tables much here at Monte? No, I'm afraid that sort of thing ceased to amuse me years ago. I can well understand that. As for me, if I had a home like Manderley, I should certainly never come to Monte. I hear it's one of the biggest places in that part of the country, and you just can't beat it for beauty. And what do you think of Monte Carlo? Or don't you think of it at all? Oh, well, well, I think it's rather artificial. She's spoiled, Mr. DeWitter. That's her trouble. Most girls will give their eyes for a chance to see Monte. Wouldn't that rather defeat the purpose? Now that we've found each other again, I hope I shall see something of you. You must come and have a drink in my suite. I hope they've given you a good room. The place is empty, so if you're uncomfortable, mind you, make a fuss. Your valet is unpacked for you, I suppose. I'm afraid I don't possess one. Perhaps you'd like to do it for me. Well, I... <laughs> I hardly think... Uh, perhaps you could make yourself useful to Mr. DeWitt if he wants anything done. You're a capable child in many ways. That's a charming suggestion, but I'm afraid I cling to the old motto. He travels fastest who travels alone. Perhaps you've not heard of it. Good night. What do you make of that? Do you suppose that sudden departure was intended to be funny? Come, don't sit there gawking. Let's go upstairs. Have you got the key? Yes, Mrs. Van I remember when I was younger, there was a well-known writer who used to dart down the back way whenever he saw me coming. I suppose he was in love with me and wasn't quite sure of himself. Well, c'est la vie. By the way, my dear, I don't think that I mean to be unkind, but you were just a teeny weeny bit forward in Mr. Winter. Your effort to enter the conversation quite embarrassed me and I'm sure it did him. Men loathe that sort of thing. Oh, come, don't suck. After all, I am responsible for your behavior here. Perhaps he didn't notice it. Poor thing. I suppose he just can't get over his wife's death. They say he simply adored her. Oh, yes. I know Mr. DeWitt well. I knew his wife, too. Before she married, she was the beautiful Rebecca Hildreth, you know. She was drowned, poor dear, while she was sailing near Mandalay. He never talks about it, of course, but he's a broken man. I suppose I'd better have it. Mm. Wretched stuff. Give me a chocolate, quick. Oh, there you are. It's about time. Hurry up. I want to play some rummy. May I go now? For the number of lessons you've had, you ought to be ready for Wimbledon. But this will be your last, so make the most of it. Trouble is, for me laid up like this, you haven't had enough to do. But I'm getting rid of that nurse today, and from now on, you'll stick to your job. Yes, Mrs. Van Harper. Nurse? Yes, Miss Van Harper? Are you absolutely sure you left those messages for Mr. De Winter? Well, yes, madame. I simply can't believe it. He would most certainly have called me back. Oh, well, poor boy. I simply hate to see him so alone. I'm so glad you called me, Mr. De Winter. I was making a hasty departure. It was so rude of me not to let you know. But a cable came this morning announcing that my daughter is engaged to be married. That's rather a coincidence, Mrs. Van Hopper. I asked you up here in order to tell you of my engagement. You don't mean it. Oh, how perfectly wonderful. How romantic. Who is the lucky lady? I apologize for depriving you of your companion in this abrupt way. I do hope it won't inconvenience you too greatly. When did all this happen? Just now, Mrs. Van Hopper. Just a few minutes ago. I simply can't believe it. And I suppose I ought to scold you for not having breathed a word of all of this to me. What am I thinking of? I shall give you both my congratulations and my blessings. I'm very happy for you both. When and where is the wedding to be? Here, as soon as possible. A whirlwind romance. Splendid. I could easily postpone my sailing for a week. This poor child has no mother, so I shall take responsibility for all the arrangements. Trousseau, reception and everything, and I'll give the bride away. When I luggage, go down and tell the porter to take everything out of the car. Just a minute. We're most grateful, Mrs. Van Hopper, but 
I think we'd both prefer to have it all as quiet as possible. And I couldn't possibly allow you to change your sailing plans. Oh, but... <laughs> No, no, no. Dear, I'll go down and see that your luggage is brought back. Thank you, Maxwell. So this is what's been happening during my illness. Tennis lessons my foot. I suppose I have to hand it to you for a fast worker. How did you manage it? Still water certainly run deep. Tell me, have you been doing anything you shouldn't? I, I don't know what you mean. Oh, well, never mind. I always did say that Englishmen have strange tastes. But you certainly have your work cut out as mistress of Manderley. To be perfectly frank with you, my dear, I can't see you doing it. You haven't the experience. You haven't the faintest idea of what it means to be a great lady. Of course, you know why he's marrying you, don't you? You haven't flattered yourself that he's in love with you. Fact is, that empty house got on his nerves to such an extent, he nearly went off his head. He just couldn't go on living alone. You better leave, Mrs. Van Hopper. You miss your train. <laughs> Mrs. De Winter. Goodbye, my dear, and good luck. <laughs> 